All right, Mark chapter 12, verse 35. Trying to, all these electronics. And Jesus answered, now we, we've done with the Pharisees. We've done with the scribes. Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple. So many times Jesus would go to the temple. And he would gather a group of people, which he really didn't take hard every day around him. And he would get, find a spot and he would teach. In the temple. There is no temple today. Don't tell me your church is a temple. Don't tell me your, your church is the house of God. That was destroyed 70 AD. So here he is teaching. And we're not told what it's taught. John said, well, you know, if all the things were to be recorded, I can just imagine you'll have to have track of trailers as your Bible. How say the scribes? Now, we just had a scribe. And the scribe said, you know, which is the greatest commandment of all? And he answers, he finds out the guy is pretty well near the kingdom of heaven. Now, unknown of, of, of time left, He's teaching. He says, how say the scribes, plural, there was one scribe, I believe in the, no, it was plural for the scribes. And they're in charge of the scriptures that Christ is the son of David. All right, Christ anointed. That's what Christ means. Jesus Christ is anointed of God. The Antichrist is anointed of Satan. Is the son of David. So what they will say is the Messiah is in the line of David. Okay. That's what they're saying. For David himself said by the Holy Spirit, inspiration. What we're going to read in a few moments in the Psalms, Jesus said that what David said is inspired was of the Holy Ghost. That's how you get the Bible. It's of the Holy Ghost. It's how you learn the Bible. It's not your preacher. It's not your Sunday school teacher. It's the Holy Ghost using them. If they're correct, they're right. Okay, look. Look. Here we go. Get it right. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, said to my Lord, capital L, cap, uh, small O, R, D. So, Jehovah said to my Lord, sit down my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. David, therefore, himself calls him Lord, capital L-R-D. So that small, that, that small Lord, capital L-R-D, is not David. If David himself calls him Lord, capital L-O-R-D, and whence is he from, whence is he is his son. And the common people heard him greatly, gladly. So how say the cry? How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? If David says Jehovah said to my Lord, so we got Christ, Lord Jehovah, capital L O R D, and David. I don't know if we're going to hit all that we wanted to hit. Sit on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Now, if you studied the Bible correctly, you've already got. David, therefore, himself calls him capital L-O-R-D, and henceforth he, then his son. Well, how could capital L-O-R-D call David his son? Okay. Let's look at the scriptures. 
So let's go to Psalm chapter 10, where it's quoted. We got by the scripture tonight. Again. Psalm 110, and forgive me, my vision is a little messed up tonight. Psalm 110, 1. A Psalm of David. I mean, if you've got the title to the beginning of the Psalm. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital D. In the Old Testament, Jehovah, that's Jehovah, every time you see it in the, Lord, in the New Testament, said to my Lord, capital O, capital, I mean, excuse me, capital L, O, R, D. Sit thou at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Now, the scribes are saying that this is... Christ is the son of David. But David said, the Lord said to my Lord, Jehovah said unto my Lord, sit down on my right hand, so I make thy enemies thy footstool. So we go to Matthew 22. And we talk about Christmas 2244. And you thank my daughter for reading this for me. I can't. I couldn't read it. We're going to see something in the scriptures that's more in the scriptures than the birth of Jesus. Now, the birth of Jesus you find in Isaiah and you find in Matthew. That's, and, well, kind of Matthew. He's afterward. And Luke. Kind of Matthew. Watch what we're going to learn tonight. Matthew 22, 42. And Jesus asked, he said, look at verse 41, the Pharisees gathered together. Yeah. Well, you didn't read that in, in Mark. So they gathered and said, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? Verse 42, they said, the son of David. So there it is. Jesus started it. And they answered, the son of David. The Messiah is the son of David. He said unto him, How does David in spirit, Holy Spirit, Mark, call him Lord, capital L-O-R-D, saying, The Lord Jehovah said unto my Lord, capital L, Sit down on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? Now I got a case right here. If David child is the Christ, the Lord, how is he going to call him son of Jehovah? And at this point, all the sons of David are dead. And if it was Solomon... Huh, Solomon as a Christ was a failure with a thousand wives. David had not a son that was the Christ. But the Pharisees said, when Christ said, what, what think ye of Christ, whose son is it? They said, the son of David. Now, you got to get the understanding of the Bible because many do not of son. We'll get to that, hopefully, if I remember. Luke. And forgive me, Luke 20. My vision, 42. It's hard for me to write, hard for me to read when I'm writing. Verse 40, they weren't going to ask him any more questions. That's where we left off in Mark. Verse 41, he said unto him, How say they that Christ is David's son? So here's a teaching. Christ is David's son. And Jesus calls up a controversy. So if there is a Baptist church, if there is a church 
and they're preaching something's wrong, they preach something that's controversy, and you go into, and you challenge that controversy, and you are wrong, and they wear on their, on their, on their, on their wrist a brace and say, what would Jesus do? He would contend, he would contend with that heresy and say, what are you talking about? That's not nice, that's not. Listen, Paul challenged the churches. And because of one church, he, he went in there with the truth. He says, have I become your enemy? He says, I've spoken the truth. He goes to one church and says, you guys are carnal. I had to give you milk, you spiritual babes. That's not nice. It wasn't nice to tell a pastor that, that his... Uh, 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 Vacation Bible that the church was so foolishly decorated. That wasn't nice. Don't come back to my church ever again. Hmm? He answered, said, how, the, how say they that Christ is David's son? David himself said in the book of Psalms, the Lord Jehovah said to my Lord, capital L, sit down on my right hand, Till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Look how we keep on quoting Psalms. David therefore calls him Lord. How is he then his son? David called none of his sons Lord. All right, look at Matthew. It says the book of generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David. Now was Jesus Christ the son of David? No. The son of Abraham. Was David the son of Abraham? No. Son in your Bible can be a grandson or a great, 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 great grandson. So in actuality, to say that Christ is the son of David, Matthew 1, 1, Jesus said, it's a grandson. But they are actually literally teaching that Christ is of David. Because Solomon built the temple. Everything was of gold. Solomon was the wisest man known. But that's not the Christ. Acts. The book of Acts. Two. 34. Acts 2.34 For David is not ascended into the heavens. When David died, he died in righteousness. He went to Abraham's bosom. But he says himself, The Lord, that's Jehovah, sent unto my Lord, capital L, sit down my right hand. Until I make thy foes thy footstool. All right, so, De so Peter says when we go to quote the Lord say to my Lord, sit down my right hand until I make thy, thy foes thy footstool, foes enemies. Peter has already described David as he didn't go to heaven. That's important. Look at their, verse 32. Jesus, okay, who's Jesus? Have God raised up resurrection. And Peter talked about his death. God raised up resurrection. Whereas we are all witnesses. We've seen the resurrected Christ. 
Therefore, by being the right hand of God, exalted and having received the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, run down to 34 again, and answer all we've been reading. The, David said, for David is not ascended to the heavens. David didn't go to heaven yet. But says himself, the Lord Jehovah said to my Lord, capital, that's Jesus. Sit down on my right hand. There's Jesus. Until I make thy enemies a footstool. That's when Jesus comes back second advent. He didn't recognize that. Therefore, let all those in the house of Israel know and surely that God has made this same Jesus, whom he had crucified and both Lord, capital L, small L, O-R-D, and Christ, Jehovah said to Jesus, sit down on my right hand. It's Jehovah speaking to Jesus. Before he's even crucified, before he's even a great, 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 great future son of David. And David wasn't talking about Solomon. He said in the Holy Spirit, probably before the world was even created, I don't know when, but Jehovah said to the Lord, before that Lord Jesus was even created, uh, not created, I've been the wrong thing, even before the, the Lord Jesus was conceived, that's the C word I'm looking for, not created, that would have been wrong. Sit down my right hand. Jesus has always been, he's never been created. Satan wanted me to say that. So in the eternity past, God said to himself, the son who had not been born yet, Jesus, I believe Jesus had always the name of Jesus. Angel of the Lord. Yes, Father. You're going to be seated at my right hand. And all those enemies of you are going to be put under your feet. And the nation of Israel, the sons of Abraham and Isaac, are going to know who you are because you are going to be born into a Jewish family. And they will call your name Jesus, for means Jehovah said, it will be Emmanuel, God with us. Now, if Jesus is not God and God is not Jesus, why on earth did they give him the name of God? Spiritually, if the Holy Spirit say, name his name Emmanuel. Interpreted God with us. The Christ is with us because that would have been the Holy One. So, look at Acts 2. We're in Acts 2. Verse 2. It didn't go too far. Acts 2. Um, try Acts 1. Acts 1, 2. Okay, so go down further. So, verse 10. Now remember they said David did not ascend. While they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by him in white apparel. There's a, res there's a resurrection. There's the accession of Jesus. Going to the Father, the ascension, not the resurrection, the ascension. Boy, the devil wants me to have the wrong words in it. Jesus Christ has already been resurrected. Here, I mean, he's walking with, with the 11 disciples, got that right, and then boom, he, he ascended. 
And from the ascension, he goes to the right hand of the Father, as David said would happen. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father, still to this day waiting to come get his bread. That's not David. Now back to chapter 2. Uh, we want now it says in chapter 2 29 men and brethren Peter talking to the Jews let me freely speak unto you the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried okay you think he had a resurrection and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. You see, the, you see the gravestone over there? You see where David's laying? He's still there. It's funny because the dead Old Testament saints, not all of them, went up when Jesus came out of the grave. But they are looking at David's tomb and it's undisturbed to say David's still laying. He didn't go up. So it would maybe look at in the rapture, those that have died in Christ, those tombs are not going to look untouched. They're going to be something split and open. You don't want to have a funeral when Jesus comes. Because I believe, and it could be wrong, you don't have to take this for face that I could be, but I have a funny feeling the dirt's going to go flying. I believe out of the ocean, the bodies are going to come out. <laughs> so back to Mark 12. I mean, the resurrection, that's not what we're talking about tonight. But it's Jehovah speaking to Jesus. And yes, Jesus is the son, the grandson, the grand grandson, grand 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 grandson of David. Verse 38. And the people were glad. Because there was a false teaching. There was a heresy. And he said unto them. In his doctrine, in his teaching, that's doctrine. Beware of the scribes. He's just called them out. Which love to go in long clothing. There they are dressed. And love salutations in the mark of it. They are so dressed, they are so to themselves, they will know, Mr. Scribe, how you doing? Rabbi, how you doing? Master, how you doing? Priest, father, so-and-so, how you doing? Nun, how you do? See, you can recognize a Catholic priest. You can recognize a Catholic nun. You can re recognize some of the religious garbs. You can recognize them in the public. I, I've said many times, you heard me. I was in the hospital one day, and we were got in this elevator, and this guy's wearing his, his suit, his fruit of looms is on the front, and they go, Father, Father, I says, how you doing, mister? And he had that name, what his name was. And that one of them said, no, you're to call him father. I said, he ain't my father. You ain't got no wives, right? And if you ain't got no wives, you ain't got no children. And if you got children without having no wives, you are an adulterer. Mister. And they got all upset. I said, you don't know who I am, do you? I didn't have a doctorate yet. I said, I'm a preacher. He didn't dress me as such, and I was wearing, you know, in the hospital going to see my wife, blue jeans and t-shirt. I didn't have no, you know, I've been in churches, they got the little thing, we're a deacon. They got the badge to say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a usher. And they got the sign outside the church, this is the pastor's parking. And I've seen cars that say clergy on them. And, That's your reward. You know that? That love salutation in the marketplace. They love to be recognized. So does your, your religions. Why do you think they dress in those monkey wares? I 
I mean, I wouldn't say shorts, but I would say, let your pastor be up there in blue jeans and t-shirt. I said one time, you know, anybody who really wears a monkey suit, talking about a suit, and I, most of them are criminal. Well, you, you got to watch it because you could be speaking about the clergy. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, sir, some of the clergy are devils. And the chief seats in the synagogue. And that is, you know, there were these great seats. There were these, and it's funny because in the synagogues is where the Jews met. And here's your Baptist. You stole my seat. There were special seats for them. You know, most Baptist churches have a seat up on the platform, up upon the altar where the preacher sits. And almost looks like a throne. It's thronely. It's a big, wonderful, could be even a padded seat. And the preacher sits up there and tries to look elegant. And, and I've been in the Catholic Church, and, you know, they come down that thing, have that stupid, stunky uh, incense. Which devour widows' houses. For pretense making long prayers. You see, widow is in her house. Her husband John dies, and they go visit and say, If you give to the church $24, we will pray three special prayers for your husband in purgatory. And we pray special prayers if he's in hell. We might be able to get, you know, maybe some leniency out of hell. You pay us. Now, when you stop paying us, which means when they eat all the the, the widow's finances, which they would, okay, we're not going to pray no more. And that widow will come broke and starving for prayer for her loved one. Get out of here. I don't have anything to do with you. That's religion. Which devour widows' houses and they just eat it all up. For a pretense to make long prayers and we'll pray for these shall receive greater damnation. Don't worry about the religious crowd. Don't worry about a preacher gets up there and say this prayer and they die and go to hell. God will take care of that. We'll just preach the gospel. Jesus sat over against the treasury, so he, he he's by the treasury. And your Baptist preachers love that. I'm surprised the Baptist church don't have him sitting by this big box up in front of the pew. Listen, I, I have heard some, you know, some churches don't have, you know, the, the dollar dance. You get up there, you got the one dollar. Then they play the music for the five dollars. Who, who's going to put five dollar bills in? Then they they have the little hoo-ha for those who's going to put ten up there. Then they really have a hoo-ha, whoever's going to put a 20 in the bar, and they really get even more when somebody's going to put a 50 in the bar, and the greatest hoo-ha for the one that's going to put $100 in that bar, too, ha, hoo-ha. Religion and churches are seriously doped. And beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. Now look, cast, Doing, doing. They just throw it. Many that were rich cast in much. Hey, that sounds good. Your Baptist preachers would love that. But hey! And that much would be over the time. I mean, it's much. There came a certain poor widow. She threw in two mites. Oh, man, what's that? So you two mites, which make a farthing. 
Oh, big, big deal. Big deal. Look at that. But no one would see. She's not casting it in. She's through. They're casting. There's some kind of difference. I don't know what the difference between casting and through. It makes you wonder why they're casting. What kind of thing you, they, did they set up that you had to cast it? Was it like a wishing well? You couldn't go close up to it? We were at a restaurant. We used to have an area where people could throw pennies. Well, all those pennies were gone. Which make a farthing. Well, that's not much. And he called his disciples, the twelve, including one that's the thief and hold the bag, who wanted thirty-three pieces of silver. Said unto which he cast the money at the priest's feet. Did you get that? She threw. They and Judas cast. Verily I say unto you, that the poor widow has cast more in. He, he, can you imagine the faces at that point? All right, Jesus, you're God. You know it all. But you failed math in school. You see what the rich people are casting in there? That's a lot more than those two mites. As far as Peter didn't speak up. Then all they which have cast into the treasury. She outdid the rich people. Some Baptist preachers would not say that was so. I'm going to tell you something. Watch. Why don't, pre why don't some of these preachers preach this? For all they did cast in of their abundance so what they did was they paid their bills. They went to the restaurants. I'm just they 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 went to the bowling alley. They took the cruise or the camper trip. They paid off their gambling debt, and by the end of the week for a temple for synagogue they open up their purse and they, okay this is it there you go Lord. and even in their abundance the Bible says the rich cast much they had a lot in their wallet but they had spent a lot more for themselves than for God because if the rich cast in much and that was their abundance, that was left over. Can you imagine if they had tithe what they had? But they went above the tithe in themselves, not for the Lord. They cast, not even regarding, was it 10%, was it 20%, was, here the word, this is what's left from the week. I'll get my check next week. And still came out to be much. That's got to have been a lot of money. But she, of her want, and I'm going to speculate, I know this is, hold on, electric bills do, water bills do, the rent is due, 
The hospital is, is, is calling her on the phone. The phone bill is due. All these bills are due. And she don't have no money but a farthing, which breaks out to two months. And did cast. Now Jesus says she cast. In all that she had. This is all the money she had. And I go, you know, oh, two months worth of it ain't nothing. That's all she had. A preacher would have you be wonderful if you put in that, that plate every week all you had. He would love it. Don't, never mind your bills, never mind your thing, put it in the plate. You know who says that? A radio or a television evangelist. I don't care if you got a sick mom in the hospital, I don't care if your dad is on welfare and all that, you send all your money to our kingdom castle dot com. He imagined them preaching the poor widow's night. She gave it all. And Jesus praised her. Even all her living, period. She would go home and have no money for food, no money for her bills. Meanwhile, the rich are spending liberty, spending luxuriously, and whatever is left off, and Americans do that, you pay all your bills, you pay all your lottery, you get your special meals all week, and you, you, you know, the office pool, you spend all your thing, and when you come to church Sunday morning, you open up your wallet and say, okay, we got to go to lunch after church, so we can't give that 20. So George Washington goes into the bar, and you got a lot more than was George Washington hanging out. Poor old George is the one that ends up in church. Jefferson ends up at the restaurant. Franklin ends up at the gas station. What's left over? Period. Gave it all to the Lord. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that. I would have to really get down to making sure the Lord is leading you. But I would not say to do that. If the Lord truly is leading you, Okay, you do it once. Don't do it twice in a row. Do not do it three times in a row. You pay your bills. I'm going to tell you right now about tithing. The Bible says you give cheerfully. This woman is giving cheerfully. Nobody, nobody is preaching to this woman or making her give what she, and that would be what Paul will speak about. Hopefully we would get to Corinthians. You pay your bills. I mean, you've got bills you can't pay. You pay the best you do. And then you put something in the plate. And when you put it in the plate, you play it because you want to give it to the Lord. You apologize to the Lord you, if you can't give 10%. But nowhere it says that Christians give 10%. Now, I tell you when one time maybe you can give all your check. You got to, every, every so often you get that fifth pay week. Everybody, for their, oh, we got a free pay, pay we got extra money. Why don't you put that in the pot? You get $321.83. All right, I got nothing to do this week. All right, your church, Baptist church, date, 500, whatever I said, $38. And give it all.
I'll just tithe it. Yeah. <laughs> God will bless me for tithing. <laughs> really? Well, God said give you more. Well, yeah, I'm not saying even more. I'm saying you give to God what would please your heart and you believe it would please God. If you're short-changing God, your heart's going to tell it and God's going to know it. And if you're putting money in that plate just for recognition, listen, I have seen people put in offering envelopes in a in the basket, whatever you want to call it, and they were empty. But people saw them put an envelope in there. I have heard some stories of things that have gone into a collection plate. I won't even talk about them. But you think they're giving. Boy, they're giving all right. 